I've been working on gene therapy, uh, developing gene therapy for 15 years. I'm now delighted to, to report to you that we have proof, really good proof, that gene therapy can be used to, to help patients and to treat RP. To start with, I'd, I'd just like to define what gene therapy is. And, and quite simply, it's the delivery of genes to treat disease. And different types of RP are caused by defects in different genes. So one way of treating RP by gene therapy is to introduce normal copies of a defective gene back into the retina. And we can do this by putting the gene into a virus and injecting the virus into the eye. And the virus delivers the gene to cells in the retina. And the virus has been modified so that it's no longer harmful, it can't replicate, and it's just a gene delivery unit. So in theory, it's, it's very simple, but there are, are enormous technical challenges. Since there are very many different forms of RP, we had to decide which type might be the most suitable for the first clinical trial. And after some deliberation, we chose, um, the form that we chose was a type of um, labor congenital amaurosis, severe early onset RP, caused by defects in a gene called RPE65. A number of groups, um, particularly in the, in, the, in the United States, had already shown that it's possible to achieve very good rescue of a dog model of this particular form of, of RP. And in 2004, we started testing um, engineered viruses in mouse and dog models. And it took us two years to do all the preclinical testing and, the, and the, all the paperwork required for the regulatory agencies. And in February 2007, we started. The main purpose of the trial was to, to see if we could, we could do something as radical as injecting an engineered virus into the eye without causing harm. And to date, we've treated uh, three young adult subjects aged between 23 and 17. And in each case, the patients received uh, the vector, the engineered virus, to, in about a third of, the, of, of one eye. And we followed the patients for up to 18 months and carried out a huge number of tests. We took blood samples, or looked into, into the back of their eyes at, at, at regular intervals, and they had very many um, laborious tests of, 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 of vision. And it's important to, to note that this is still a trial and it, it's, it's not a treatment. But we were very encouraged by the results. So what have, we, what have we been able to show in this first phase? Well, firstly, the approach is safe. We can inject a modified virus into the retina, fragile tissue, especially fragile in patients with retinal degeneration. There have been no adverse events, surgical complications or immune responses to the, to the virus. And the fact that there have been no complications is also a testament to the, to the skill of the surgeon, James Bainbridge. Um, it's a tribute to he, not only his surgical skills, but his scientific knowledge um, that, that, that we've achieved these sort of, I think, fantastic and, and very important results. So not only were we able to show that um, the, the procedure is safe, but we, we showed that we could improve retinal function in one of the subjects, and that was, that was Stephen. And Stephen was the third subject enrolled into the trial, and he had the least advanced degeneration, which is almost certainly why we were able to see an improvement in Stephen's vision where we couldn't demonstrate that in, in, in the first two subjects. So we could show in very objective scientific tests that parts of Stephen's retina were a hundred to a thousandfold more sensitive to light. And this scientifically is very interesting, showing that the, the gene transfer is doing what it's supposed to do, but what does it mean in terms of clinical benefit? Well, we could then show that this improvement in retinal sensitivity 
improves Stephen's night vision and his ability to, to navigate around a maze. He could navigate a maze um, as effectively as, as, as someone with, with normal vision. And I think Stephen will talk to you about, about his experiences, but we found it quite remarkable. And I think when the video was shown to, 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 to those other in the field, in the field of gene therapy, um, they, they found it extremely compelling. When I first heard about this trial, I didn't exactly understand what it was all about until we went, of course, down to see him. And they fully explained everything to me, you know, all the consequences of what could happen and what, you know, they was hoping the benefits would be. And it made me nervous just to, you know, think about what could happen. But in the end of it, you know, it's all worth it. If it does make even a small benefit to me, it means a lot to them, you know, because it's, you know, a breakthrough, really, isn't it? So we now know that we can improve vision even in advanced stages of, of disease. But we also know that we're much more likely to get better results in the next phase of the trial because we'll increase the dose of the, of the, um, of the viral vector and we'll treat younger patients. And we have every expectation that it will work better in in younger individuals and in children in particular, where we expect at some point to be able to improve central vision and, and vision in, in, um, in daylight. So we've already started this next phase and treated um, a 12-year-old patient, and we expect to complete this next phase in the next 12 to 18 months. It's gonna to help to develop gene therapies for other specific conditions, other types of RP, in which we put the normal copy of the defective gene back into the retina. But the other type of therapy that will benefit from our clinical trial is the development of gene therapies that might provide benefit for many individuals, a generic treatment that might preserve photoreceptor cells and might preserve vision. And I think you've all heard previously about um, the potential of growth factors um, to, to preserve the retina and to preserve vision. Um, there's still a lot more work to be done, but it's a very promising area and some promising candidate growth factors. But the best way to deliver these growth factors to the retina is probably through gene therapy. And by showing that we can deliver genes safely to the retina, we've made a major step forward to developing these generic treatments that might be available to, to many more individuals. And I think that is, is, is why... Um, our trial is important not just for people um, who um, have an RPE65 defect, but why it may be very important for, for RP um, sufferers um, in general. In summary, I think we've made huge progress, and we couldn't have done so without um, a number of things. A fantastic team. We also have to thank the patients and their families but we didn't do this work in isolation. We weren't, we're not the only group working in this area. And we have to acknowledge the, the work of other groups around the world. And it's, it's important also to understand that gene therapy and these novel therapies are built on basic science. And without finding the genes, so the pioneering work of, of um, Shomi Bhattacharya and others, and the understanding of the disease processes, we cannot develop the therapies. And finally, um, we could not have achieved what we regard as, and, and many in, in, in the medical sciences regard as a historic breakthrough without support from you, um, the BRPS. And your patience, and it has been patience, is, is really starting to pay off. And I think with your continued support, we can go on to bigger and better things and really build on the success and, and develop treatments for all forms of RP.